Hello, and welcome back to our Celebrating Pride podcast. This is the second episode of this series, and today we'll be exploring terminology. We hope you enjoy it. Um, I, I think this idea of terminology is also a, a sort of a fascinating one because you know, we, we look at and we think of in terms of terminology and, and we were talking a bit before about what, what do each of the letters mean within LGBTQIA. Um, and I think we, we identified a, as a panel that, you know, it, the Q can mean different things to different people. The I can mean different things to different people. And I think it's, you know, t- to me, it feels like much of life's rich tapestry uh, that that actually there are there are all kinds of ways that people will feel and who the people are. Um, how, how do people find technology, you know, the, the experience interacting with with us with acronyms and uh, and also we have talked a little bit about EDI, meaning does it mean equality, diversion, inclusion? Does it mean equity, diversity and inclusion? Does anybody have any thoughts on, on, on the use of terminology? Andy? So I'm going to say I, I often get confused. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people uh, feel that way. Because as I say, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a jobbing GP, really, when it when it comes to this. I have my own um, identity. But beyond that, my, you know, my experience of other uh, sexuality and sexual identities is, is just limited to, to what I you know, to what I, I see. So, so I, I find I do have to, um, you know, do, do a bit of training or, or read up and, you know, as a professional, I recognise that sometimes I don't know everything that's going on or, you know, what the, what the letters mean. And, you know, and, and I want to be helpful to patients that come in with different uh, gender identity, you know, and issues. So I have to keep myself educated, James. So I think, I think it's fine to acknowledge that it's complicated and, it's fine. And often with patients, actually, sometimes if I don't understand something, I'll, I'll just be you know, naturally curious with them and ask. And, and actually, people generally are quite appreciative you know, um, of that approach. So um, I mean, that's how I feel about it. I just try and approach it with a natural curiosity and, and not try and think that I've, that I've got all, all the answers or, or know it, really. And I think that's nice. I think, I think the curiosity of us as, as professionals, as healthcare professionals, is um, in particularly primary care professionals, the curiosity about about people's experience and asking kind and questions, I think, is where it really starts. Um, it's you know, people gain confidence, people are going to gain a voice, which is all excellent. We need to recognise how that we can interact with that. Um, I'm just going to come to you, uh, Robbie. Uh, did, did you have anything you wanted to, to add to this? Yeah, I think um, I think Andrew, you make a really really valid point that. You know, we, we've already spoken about what community means and we've kind of said, you know, we're, we're all sort of under the, the same broad umbrella acronym that we keep using. But actually, you know, as a queer man, I don't know what it's like to be um, a, uh, a cisgender lesbian or to be pan or to be trans. Mm. That's not my lived experience. So mm. even though I'm part of that wider community I, I still feel a responsibility to understand and be an ally to mm. other parts of that community in the same way that you've described Becky being out of the community you are to the community as a whole um, and, and I think that goes back to what you were saying Andy that actually sometimes we may be not necessarily the best at saying we don't know and asking our patients or or our colleagues or those with lived experience about that and I do think technology has helped with that in terms of being able to understand that lived experience much much better and it is much more um, readily available I mean you know you could pick up uh, any device and look on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or any other you know social media outlet others are available um, you know it, it, in terms of you can you can find lots of lived experience stories I think the the caveat to some of this though is for you know for for all of the um great stories and um examples and experiences that are out there we have to also see the flip side of technology which which can also sometimes bring the the not quite so good side uh out in people um and people do feel you know if you're hidden behind a screen you, you're then faceless and actually you can say and do things that are um, that you wouldn't necessarily say in in public, and I think that's that's one of the challenges of technology. That for all of its brilliant stuff that it brings, it, it does bring with it some of those challenges as well. Um, so yeah, that it, it was just a, a kind of follow on from Andy's comments, really. Yeah, brilliant. I think a lot of that rings true. Erin, I think you wanted to add something to that. That was actually very similar. 
very, very similar to what Robbie said. And the fact that you're part of a community doesn't mean that you know every branch of that community. So, um, you know, I, like Becky, I'm not part of the community, but actually, uh, you know, I would identify myself as South Asian. And something that is what we said earlier about the fact that actually South Asian is such a broad term. And you really, um, it's amazing through patients how much you learn about the community you know so there are you know different places in south asia who speak different languages of different colors have different cuisines and i think that's the whole you know i think that's the important part as primary care clinicians is our responsibility to educate ourselves and i think now it's much more you know it's very different to 10 years ago where you could almost you know you, you, you overlook that difference whether it was uh, you know about um that's not specifically about this community but as in any community just overlook the difference and treat everyone the same well actually no we really can't do that and there are real um uh, you know there's real nuances to those to those people in those communities and the um inequalities that they face and the and the way that it impacts their health just their accessibility to to health care um, and unless we make ourselves, unless we educate ourselves and make our places of work um, places where uh, all people from all backgrounds feel welcome, we're not really doing our job properly. And I think that was so. Again, for me, Andy, much like you, although uh, I, I'm, I'm starting this new journey on the equality, diversity, and ED and inclusivity, <laughs> um, although I'm starting my journey as, as leading that for the hub. Um, it's all new to me and it's really uh, it's really opened up my eyes to how little I did know um, and I think uh, you know naturally you you almost carry what's close to you so for me it was that kind of that BME and the race side of things of ED and I that I was interested in and actually I've, uh, since stepping into this I've realized god it's so much broader yeah. and and there is there's is so much to learn but you know we're not going to know everything, but I do think it's our responsibility to try and educate ourselves and 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 um, find that common ground. And, and even even within the the group we've really brought together, I mean, a lot of what you say rings really true. And again, we were we were, we were quipping about about what does the South Asian community really mean? But you know, looking to get to put a, together a good panel for for today's talk and for today's podcast, you know, we we came to it and recognised well, actually, we are talking about our GT. LGBTQIA, mm -hmm. and we have six people here, cisgendered, and uh, three uh, heterosexual people, and and three uh, three gay people, and trying to figure out actually, that, do we really understand about the other uh, the other yes. the aspects of the corners of what we or what we're trying to explore today? And it's difficult. So I, I really like this idea of being of being inquisitive, kindly inquisitive and asking questions. I'm seeing lots of nods, so I hopefully that's the right direction we're heading in. And that's a nice roundup for this episode as the take home message for our listeners to go out there and educate yourself on something you're not familiar with regarding the LGBTQIA plus community. And in the next episode, we'll discuss the impact on technology has had on this community. Thank you for listening today. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you at the next episode.